All right, B, you want to hear a story, man? Yeah. All right, so this is about the dogs of Tupac, which is a Mercado in Peru, and my lost love. And I, you never got to meet her, but they kind of intertwine. It's a story time on Koa Nature. So last year when I was in Peru, I went there in August and we went to the mountain district of Mache, which is this beautiful bucolic area with a lot of potato farming and these red, sort of red soiled mountains. It was just a real lovely place. And I was up there with my buddy Michael and his family was up there for a reunion sort of. And one day we went to go climb this mountain called Miramar. But what was also unique and what I also love about Peru are these, they have, they have dogs just wandering the streets down there. It's not like the United States. They have a lot of strays and a lot of people have their dogs that they just let roam the streets or the mountains. It doesn't matter if it's the city or uh, you know, a rural setting. So it was one day, we're just climbing this mountain. And this little dog decides to join us. And it was just like this little dog came along and climbed the entire mountain with us. Yes. 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 Perfect. Okay, Rico, Ben. Ben. She got little birds in her fur and we picked them out. Hey, Moss. Hey, hey, hey. As, as this dog was climbing the mountain, I also noticed that Michael's cousin, this beautiful young woman, was climbing a mountain in a, like a designer coat and jeans. So that's when she caught my eye. Fast forward to a little later, I, I started to get to know this woman beautiful young architects crafty clever and I was like I got to know her more on this trip and we ended up going to uh, a vacation she had planned to go north we went to Nuro and I got to swim with some turtles with her and uh, it was just Amazing, I was falling in love with this girl. So I, I told her, I, was, I have to get to know you better. I, I have to. So I went back in October, and this is where the dogs of Tupac come into play. So I lived with her for a few weeks, and every day, pretty much every day, we'd go to this market near her house called Tupac. Yeah, so in Tupac, it's just this mercado where people are selling all sorts of things from knockoff designer clothing to fresh produce or they have the butcher markets or knockoff CDs and it's where people do their thing but in this market I just noticed these dogs that were going around and so I started to film them I had to it was just very interesting how these dogs and the humans formed a symbiotic relationship and that's just a relationship where they're sort of depending on each other either for companionship or it's to keep you know, the rats away or individual stalls are actually having their dogs kind of do a patrol so but it was just fascinating to see some dogs that were obviously strays I started giving them little names like I'd be like that's Eddie right there that's Jermaine that's Roxanne and I'd start to recognize the dogs from day to day I'd be like oh hey Polly how you doing today and the dogs would actually you know they'd recognize me because I was kind of filming them
But I mean, you'd have the juice lady, I'd go get a fresh squeezed orange juice. You could get a fresh squeezed orange juice right in front of you for like 25 cents US. And this was the day to day of all of these people. They, they live in this, like most people spent their lives in this market. They, that's what they do. These people, a lot of people, like the girl I was seeing, would go there and uh, they buy their fresh produce, they'd buy what they needed and they'd take these little combis home or these little three-wheeled motorcycles and the dogs would be there right alongside them, barking at them in the street or chasing cars. You know, and the dogs had their own little agendas as well. They had to keep track of each other and make sure their own little system was working. See, so we, when you think of nature, when you think of a very dense city, concrete, cars, honking, you don't really think of nature, do you? No, not usually. And I think that's something we need to, as a generation, we need to start looking past. We have to realize that we humans are a part of nature, whether we're in a city, whether we're in a place like this. We humans have change the globe so significantly that if we start to consider nature as all that is untouched by humans, all that humans have not manipulated or affected in some way, then there's hardly a place on this planet that we could think of. It's true. I don't know, it was just, for me, it was one of, it was one of the best times of my life because even though I wasn't in a setting like this where I, I, this is where I'm comfortable the most, with the birds singing, with the frogs going boop. Well, I can't do it. On the shore, uh, this is comfortable, but to see the interactions in that market in Tupac was great. And to share that experience with her, the woman, that was a great time too. Yeah, so I never got to meet her, whatever ended up happening with her. She dumped me with a text message. <laughs> You know, it was a great time. I wish her the best and she'll have an amazing future. And I just hope my little homies, those little perritos and Tupac are watching her and taking care of her as she buys her produce every day and all that. Not bad. Sounds like it was a good adventure. Yeah. They, they say, you know, it's, uh, it's the question. Is it better to have loved and lost or to have never loved at all? And I, I think after we deal with the heartache of love and losing it, that's very strenuous, but it's almost a privilege to just have someone like that and that feeling for a while, right? Yeah, absolutely. I send the best wishes to my Rito homies in Peru as well as my Homo sapiens sapiens friends and thank you for listening to my story. I appreciate it. Alright, good luck fishing. Let's get out of here. Let's go to a let's go to a better spot. How about that? Sounds good to me. <laughs>